Previously, you have learned that the kidney is important because of the processes of ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption. Now, in this portion, let us take a look at what are these two different processes used for. The kidney is very important because the kidney serves as a osmoregulator. What does an osmoregulator do? do? Okay. The word osmo and regulate tells you clearly, gives you a clue that in this case here, what are they doing? It's actually regulating your osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure of your blood. Effectively, this refers to the water potential. in your blood. Okay. In this segment, water potential will be given the symbol like this so as to shorten the time taken to write the word water potential. Okay. So, in our body, the water potential of our blood must be kept within a very tight range, a very, very narrow range. Why? Because you have learned previously in the chapter of osmosis and diffusion, that water, water molecules will move from a region of high water potential to low water potential. And how, what will happen to our cells when it's immersed in different solutions? In a solution of high water potential, what do we know? We know that since water likes to move from a region of high water potential to low water potential, it will diffuse into the cell, causing it to lyse. Lysis will occur. And if it's subjected to a solution of low water potential, water will leave the cell, causing crenation. In both cases, it actually damages the cell, causing the cell to cease to exist. We do not want that to happen to our body. Hence, the kidney serves as a serves as a very important organ to regulate the osmotic pressure. So how does the kidney regulate the osmotic pressure in our blood? Several partners are involved. Who are the partners involved in osmoregulation? Of course. The first will be your kidney. Secondly, the brain. Specifically, which part of the brain? The hypothalamus. The pituitary gland. How is these two parts involved? They are involved because the hypothalamus produces an enzyme, sorry, it produces a hormone, hormone, eh? not enzyme, sorry, okay, known as the antidiuretic hormone. This hormone serves to increase the permeability of your kidney tubules. Allowing more water to be reabsorbed. So now let us take a look at the process by which it happens. 
Now let's take a look at how the kidney, the brain, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland and ADH actually serves to help us osmoregulate our water potential in the blood. On this page, what I have done is I have drawn in the kidney tubules. Okay. What happens is the kidney tubules will lead to this portion here which is towards the bladder. So whatever that remains inside the tube will form part of the urine. I have divided the page into two. Okay. On the left, we shall discuss what happens when you have a, you have a high intake of water. Like for example, you drink a lot of water that day. And in case two, we shall discuss how, what happens with, during exercise when you lose a lot of water. How will your body react so as to maintain the water potential in your blood? Okay. So let's look at case one. In case one, on one fine day when you decide to take in a large volume of water in your body, what happens to the water potential in your blood? Okay. The water potential in your blood will actually increase. This increase in water potential in your blood will actually cause... Okay, sorry. This increase in water potential in your blood will be detected by the brain. Sorry. Let me turn this around. Detected by the brain. The brain has this portion known as the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is the site of ADH production. ADH is a hormone known as antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone serves to increase the permeability of your kidney tubules. The hypothalamus produces the ADH which is then which is stored in pituitary gland. When required, the pituitary gland will secrete the ADH. So, in case 1, when the water potential in your blood is increased, the brain detects the high water potential and it will tell the pituitary gland to secrete ADH. Take note, ADH is always being produced and secreted. The only difference is whether is it a lot being secreted or very little being secreted. So in this case here, when water potential in blood is high, that it is detected by the brain, the ADH will be secreted. In this case here, we have a lot of water in our body. We would like to expel it from them, from our body. We want to so hence you know, okay, if you think logically, more urine has to be produced. So in this case here, do you think more water? will have to be reabsorbed into the blood or less. In this case here, of course, very good, it is less. Okay, Less volume of, sorry, less ADH will be secreted. Okay, Denote by my arrow here. So because only very little ADH being secreted, okay, less water is also being reabsorbed. So let me repeat. Huh? Less ADH being secreted. Kidney tubule is less permeable. So less water comes out into the bloodstream. When less water is in the bloodstream, it means that there will be a lot of water moving towards the bladder. Okay. In the form of urine, that will be removed from our body. So this is how our body regulates the water potential when the water potential is very high. So high water potential in the blood being detected by the brain. The brain will cause the secretion of ADH to be less. So less ADH being produced, less water being reabsorbed into bloodstream, more urine will be formed. And hence, what happens? When more urine is formed, okay, more urine form, this serves to decrease our water potential in your blood. Okay, so let us repeat one more time. Case 1. High intake of water 
causing the water potential of blood to be high. This high water potential is detected by the brain. Upon detection, the brain will cause less ADH to be secreted, hence less water being reabsorbed. into your bloodstream, more urine form, hence decreasing the water potential in your blood, bringing back to its normal range. So now let's take a look at case 2. In this case here, maybe on a very warm day, you are perspiring a lot and you actually lose a lot of water from your body. In this case here, the water potential in your body will drop. It may drop drastically, it may drop, you know, very minute volumes, but it drops, okay? Once again, this will be detected by the brain. This detection will cause, once again, the production and secretion of your ADH. So what do you think now? You have less water in your blood. You will try to maintain, you will try to keep all your water, as much water as possible in your blood, isn't it? So in this case here, because we want to keep the water molecules within our bloodstream, I must ensure a lot of water comes out from kidney tubule into the blood. So over here, a lot of ADH will be secreted. And because of this, the permeability of your kidney tubule increases, a lot of water will be reabsorbed. Okay. And because of a lot of water being reabsorbed into your body, into your bloodstream, sorry, very little water will travel down the kidney towards the bladder in the form of urine. In this case here, okay, let me write it down. Less urine will be formed. Allowing us to maintain, sorry, allowing us to bring the blood water potential back towards the norm. Okay, so less urine will be formed. So more urine, oh sorry, more less urine will be formed. More water reabsorbed into your bloodstream, bring the water potential back towards normal. So this is how the kidney actually serves as a osmoregulator.